If you want talk, games, and fun all rolled into one, well, you've come to the right place. This is The Game Show, where host Bradley Clark and his special guests talk about the world of television game and competition shows. But Bradley's guests aren't here to just talk. They came to play a game as well. What will today's topic be? What game does Bradley have planned? There's only one way to find out. It's time to start the show. You heard the man. Welcome to The Game Show. And here's your host, the Bradster himself, Bradley Clark. You guessed it. It's time to start the show yet again. Thank you so much, Austin Angelo, and welcome to another episode of The Game Show. And if you're an amazing race fan, you might get green with envy that I get to talk with my special guests today. And yes, there's a reason I said green with envy. You last saw them race around the world on the 27th season of The Amazing Race in which they placed second. And if you're an avid YouTube watcher, you might have seen a video of them under Iceland's Northern Lights, one saying, will you marry me? And the other saying yes. They also host a weekly YouTube show called Racers Recap in which them and their Amazing Race friends talk about the most recent episode of The Amazing Race. I am pleased to welcome onto the game show the green team, Justin and Diana Sheeman. Justin and Diana, how are you? Great. That was an awesome intro. Well, yeah, I love it. I like to treat my guests well when they come on. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a pleasure to have you. Ever since I first saw your YouTube video to watching you on Rachel Ray and then finally seeing your dreams come true of coming on the race, it was such a pleasure to watch you go around the globe. Thank you. It's been just such an amazing journey from the proposal to the Rachel. I mean, everything just was a whirlwind, and we're just trying to ride it out as long as we can. And of course, I'm also an avid watcher of your Racers Recap videos, where you two talk about the current week's episode of The Amazing Race, as I mentioned before. And before we started our chat, actually, I rewatched a few minutes of your first Racers Recap episode of Season 30. Oh, we had a good time doing that. It's a way for us to stay in touch with the fans. It's also a way for us to be the super fans that we were before the show and just kind of geek out about our favorite show. And we're lucky enough to be joined by, you know, Corey Cool from season 28 and as well as James Earl from season 27. So we have a lot of fun every week recapping the show. So I must say, when I was watching, I agreed with a lot of the points you mentioned on your first episode, one of them being that they didn't acknowledge the former racers that attended the starting line send-off in October. And I was lucky enough to meet you two at Washington Square Park in New York City. That's where they had the starting line. And I got to take a picture with you two holding my sign that read, Remember to read your clue or Phil might eliminate you. Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's great. That was a good little sign because it's true. I mean, reading the clue is the most important thing. And not only just reading it, but making sure that you do every part of the clue. Yeah, every bit of the clue. It's not just glance over it and look at the big words. There's a reason that certain words are capitalized or quotations. You have to pay attention to all the little things. Exactly. But I was a little disappointed that my sign and myself didn't make it on TV. I felt like the beginning was, as you said, it was very rushed. And they didn't really take advantage of the fans being at the starting line and showing their love for the show with signs that they made. Because a lot of the fans did show up, and it's great to see that 30 seasons in, The Amazing Race still has such a strong fan base that it does. Right, and that was my point. So I had said that on the recap, and they did do probably one or two tapings and acknowledge all the former racers, but even just to do some video montage of the previous 29 winners or just something like that to show what a monumental season 30 is. I mean, 17 years, almost a million miles in 30 seasons is incredible for any show, let alone one that had that much of a fan base show up to a live start. It was kind of a big deal, but it was great to be a part of it since we also had a live start. It was nice to kind of be on the other end of it. Right. I was going to yeah. say that season 27 also had the live start and Rob and Brennan, the first ever winners of the Amazing Race, were at your start. So as super fans, how exciting was it to see former winners and former racers at the starting line sending you off on this amazing journey? Well, I appreciated it. Having the winners there gives you this extra oomph to be like, you know what? This is where it all started. This is why I'm here. Like, I grew up loving the show. We have this passion for the race. We have a passion for travel. And then you see those people who actually achieved the dream that we're all on the starting line trying to attain. That $1 million, that championship title of the amazing race winners. And it was just electrifying. There was a lot of racers there. But it was great just to meet the fans. I love seeing all the signs. And I hope you will get to see my sign again because I'm still hoping that the editors somehow sneak my sign in some point down the line this season. Maybe when a team actually didn't read their clue. <laughs> and they'll put my sign in there as like a, a flashback. flashback. 
Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm hoping for it, man. I hope you get your little shine in New York City. It was a great day out there. People standing out there for like four hours. So you deserve to get a little spotlight on television. Well, I appreciate it. I hope one day that I get more than just a spotlight. But that'll be good for now. (laughs) (laughs) Take what you can get. Exactly. (laughs) So let's now take a trip down memory lane, shall we? And talk about your season on The Amazing Race, season 27. And let's begin where every race does, leg one. So your race experience didn't get off to the most pleasant start, I would say, because of the fast forward. To say the least. (laughs) So it wasn't pleasant because you got denied the chance to do the fast forward task because of the weather, because it was apparently too windy in Brazil. However, what I found most interesting was that there was a fast forward on the first leg, which almost never happens. So I have a little Bradster question for you two. Before season 27, do you remember the last time a fast forward appeared on the first leg of the race? Yes, I think that was five. Close. It was the last season where every leg had a fast forward. Correct. It was season four. A four, sorry. Close. Well, I'm glad the wrong answer came now instead of later because in a little while, you two are going to play a game that tests your knowledge of Amazing Race trivia. Uh, Should be fun. And I know you two are avid watchers, to say the least, so hopefully you'll do well. (laughs) Uh, Now pressure's on. Actually, on a recent episode of the game show, I had two familiar names to you guys, Joe and Bill, Team Guido. Oh, we just met them. I know. They told me to say hi to you guys for them. Oh, hello. And they told me that you went out to dinner in Hawaii. (laughs) We did. Got to meet Tara from Team Mom and Dad. That was fun. I mean, that's the best part of Amazing Race is you just have this instant elite VIP family that kind of you can be visiting any city and there could be a potential past racer there and it's just normal. You just meet up, you have dinner, you get together, you share stories. So it's part of like this little fan club. I can only imagine being such avid watchers and knowing every single season how meeting Joe and Bill was such a thrill for you guys. I mean, come on. They were like trendsetters. They were the first to do what they did. They were the first gay couple on television. I mean, they had that thing that made the human character element of the show special. It was like, okay, it's not just going to be these beautiful places, but it's going to be about the people. And they brought it to that level. And I really appreciated that. And meeting them in person, I actually like them a lot more in person than I did on the show. <laughs> to be honest. But isn't that everybody? I mean, people meet you, Justin, and they didn't like you on TV, but they meet you in person and... They changed their tune. I can appreciate that. I liked you on TV. I always root for the super fans. I do too. Because as a super fan myself who knows the game and knows so many facts about the game and past seasons, I always root for the people who studied the show and who are real fans from the very beginning. So that's why I rooted for you guys. And that's one cool thing about the races recap. We get to find out that, you know, people like Cedric Sabalos, who we just like, okay, he's an NBA star. That's why he's on the show. But he's a super fan who's watched all 29 seasons with his whole family. April, goat yoga, super fan. She watched the races recap to prepare for her season. Like, these are things that you get to find out. And it's really cool because it's not just an alumni of people of the show, but there's like an alumni within the alumni. It's the super fans who actually got the chance to, you know, make their dreams come true, have this own little click of our own as well. Absolutely. So the Guidos, they said that you're going to easily beat their score and crush this game. So they Uh-oh. they are backing you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get to that in a little bit. So season 27, what I liked about season 27 was there were a lot of nostalgia elements to it. So I mentioned that the fast forward, first time ever since season four to have a fast forward on the first ever leg. You also had the chance to take on the first ever challenge from way back in season one, a bungee jump detour option that they turned into a roadblock on your episode from the first ever episode of The Amazing Race at Batoka Gorge in Zimbabwe. So, Justin, how exciting was it not just to take on the bungee jump challenge, but to take on the first ever challenge in Amazing Race history? You know, to be honest, at first I didn't realize what it was until after you jump off and then I'm thinking like, swing, you fat bastard, swing. And I'm like, this is where we were. But the adrenaline is just flowing so much that every single task that you get to, no matter how big or small it is, it's like the most amazing thing that's happened because this this shot of adrenaline tells you like, this is it. This is the chance. It's like do or die. You go home. Every single task is full of adrenaline, even the ones that are not adrenaline related. So when you did realize the significance of where you were in Africa, did your mind suddenly replay the first episode and did you start running through facts in your head? I was trying to see if there was going to be another, like, we always try to figure out what's coming up ahead. And we did have a little information to know that there was going to be some sort of lions coming up ahead. So we were really looking forward to the lion thing. 
after that, we knew that there was lions. So we kind of figured that that was going to be the rest of the leg. I was kind of hoping for, you know, some more throwbacks throughout the whole season. I thought that was going to kind of be a theme of like every leg is going to be sort of like a throwback and that's going to be the theme of the season. And it was one of those things where like we were taking notes throughout the entire race because you don't know what that final challenge is going to be like. Are you going to need to know what money currency? Are you going to need to know what the greeters wore, what they said to you? I mean, we were just overanalyzing. I am an overanalyzer just to begin with. So on top of like this is a chance of a million dollars, you kind of can't let anything go. You're just taking notes. You're trying to take in as much information as possible and commit it to memory. After each leg, we would talk about the leg. Okay, well, what was the first detour? What was the second detour? What was the roadblock? I mean, we would just always doing our homework and always seeing what could be used later. Well, you have to do that because you know there's going to be some sort of memory challenge. Yeah, and that's going to be what separates you from everybody else. One of the things that Diana kind of pushed for in the beginning of the race was to be at the end of the race with the best teams, not to try to eliminate the best teams and bring the worst teams with us that we knew we can beat. And that's something that I gained a lot of respect for her throughout the race because she was always like, when we get to the U-turn boards, do we go after the boys? Do we go after Team Texas, who's been at our back rallying everybody behind us? Do we U-turn them and get rid of them? And she was more of the lines like, you know what, let them fight it out. We don't need to do it. And I had a lot of respect for her. So one of the topics I talked with the Guidos about was the added elements of gameplay that are now featured throughout the race. Because when they raced back in season one, there were no sabotages at all. So being at the U-turn board must be a tense moment because the race can change in an instant if a team decides to U-turn another team. Yes. And the good thing about the race for us was we kind of knew beforehand if there was a U-turn board, we knew what we were going to do when we got there. So it wasn't like an instant reaction and possibly making a bad decision because you make a quick decision. Because you always want to do everything so fast on the race that you force yourself to make these decisions that without thought sometimes. And that's something that we tried to not do. Uh, And luckily enough for us, we were ahead a lot of the time. So we had that comfortable feeling of like, okay, let's take an extra second to make sure we do everything correct. And like Justin said, I mean, I used to row competitively in high school and I came from the standpoint, it's like, I want to be number one, not because I knocked all the other good competitors out and I mean, if you're doing it with Survivor and it counts by votes, that's different. But this is like you want to prove it not only to yourself but to your family that you can not only come in first, but I'm going to come in first knowing that I beat the best. Not that I sent the best home and I'm against the weakest, but I had said to Justin, like, we know we can beat these teams. And I want to stand at the end, feel good about the game that we played, and send them home because we were a legitimately better team than them. And that was that. No questions asked. And you mentioned you were always ahead. You actually placed first seven times on the race. So congrats on that standing alone. Thank you. To be honest, I did not anticipate that. Justin, I think, always knew we were capable of that. But I had the mentality going in that I just don't want to be last. I don't care if we're second to last. Each leg, I just want to survive enough to make it. But Justin really had the vision that, like, no, we are going to come in first. And it's kind of one of those, like, fake it till you make it thing. Like, picture yourself in first and you can make it happen. And I think after we came in ninth on that first leg and then to bounce back and come in first on that second leg, I mean, that's, like, of all the wins for us, we still talk about it today that that was the best win because that's when we kind of really realized we can do this. We can come in first and we can be a force to be reckoned with. Did you ever think to yourself, wow, we could beat Rachel and Dave's record of eight first place finishes from season 20? That's all they talked about. So that's all like the producers would kind of keep reminding you like Rachel and Dave, they have eight, they have eight. And I think it was one of those things where, okay, you have one win, two wins, three wins. That's great. But then when you start climbing up and you're moving down the fingers on your hand, okay, this is five, this is six. This is seven. I mean, the pressure just builds and builds and builds. And it's like you're just building this tower of cards that you're waiting to fall. And, I mean, it came to the point where, you know, at some point for us, it just made a couple mistakes that kept us from getting that record. But still, I mean, even to have seven wins and to know we were so close Ah. It's just, (laughs) sorry, Justin. Listen, it's something that I wanted. One of my goals was to be the first team to ever win every leg of the race. Obviously, I wanted to be that person. I'm the super fan. I wanted to go in and do that. I wanted to be known for being, you know what, the super fan who finally got his chance and just played the game the right way instead of the super fan who goes on and suffers from the super fan curse. I kind of forced the amazing race to put us on the show. 
I made a video and got attention of everybody. And everybody's like, put this dude on the show, put this dude on the show. And they had to put us on the show. So I wanted to be the winners. At least we got the record for most consecutive wins, which was five, formerly held by Rachel and Dave, which was four. That is true. And Justin, you mentioned the video you created. And for my listeners who don't know what video we're talking about, Justin created his own mini edition of The Amazing Race across a number of states. And he constructed different challenges along the way to eventually propose to Diana in their quote-unquote winning destination Iceland. Now, I've seen videos of people creating their own versions of The Amazing Race, but this was legit. He hired a cameraman. I mean, not only just hired the cameraman, but he rented a Ford car, the car that typically used to be given out as a prize. I mean, he had release forms. I mean, he pulled out all the stops. Really just, you couldn't have faked it any better. And Justin, you said something on the Rachel Ray show that really connected with me. You said, one of our dreams is to be on the race, but I can't make that happen, so I made my own race. And I thought that was such a great quote. You know, as someone who's chasing a dream myself, just to see that you did this and then you actually accomplish your dream of getting on the race is marvelous. Well, you know, I've been a radio producer for the past 15 years. And as a radio producer, always looking for the stories that are going to get people's attention. So it's like, okay, if I'm doing this for a living, how can I use my skills to try to get the attention of people and kind of see, okay, if I was producing The Amazing Race, what would I be looking for in racers? All right, I'd want somebody who's passionate, who's in love, who's got this feeling for the race. Oh, this is perfect. So in my head, I'm like, even if I don't get on the race, I'm going to have this amazing race experience. I'm going to have my wife, finally, who's going to say, yes and i'm gonna have this awesome experience of a race and in the back of my head i'm like there's no way they could say no right there's no way they could say no so it was truly a dream come true and don't stop if you haven't applied every season then you're not doing it right apply every year there's people who've been on the race that have applied 15 separate times to get on the race and actually made it so you got to be diligent and follow through i mean we actually had strangers cheering for us and rooting for us during our fake amazing race proposal one and i mean to think that somebody did that for me because of how much they love me it's like not only flattering but it's hard to put that into words that somebody would go to those lengths to show you that they love you is just something that you don't get and i feel very lucky and blessed to have somebody that is willing to go to those lengths to do that for me you're making me cry over here uh, sorry. <laughs> it's the truth though i mean i'm the lucky like, one We'll fight about that later. <laughs> Did you meet over your love of Amazing Race? No, we actually met from a mutual friend set us up. It was pretty much like a blind date. We had been set up, met once, and then we were pretty much together from the first time that we met. But Justin did morning radio. He was always going to bed early. So we kind of would be a little homebody and we'd sit in. And I never watched the race until I met him. So he introduced me to it and we would binge watch. And we started back at season one. And we just developed our relationship talking about, oh, my gosh, I would never do that. And I'm scared of heights. And then you kind of slowly reveal pieces about yourself. And you find out about this new person that you're dating through this television show about well, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Okay, well, that's good because I wouldn't do that. So you would do that. And that's really how we got started dating, and then it just kind of took off from there, getting to know each other. See, that's a great way to meet someone, bonding over a television show. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's travel. We both love to travel, but we didn't come from money, so we didn't travel a lot. So we get to travel, we get to see these places and talk about places like, oh, that's somebody I wanted to go. And it just leads to conversations that normal dating doesn't lead to, or you very rarely get into the conversations like you can on The Amazing Race, because they do such incredible things that it brings up these conversations that you would never have any other time. The next dating app craze should be an Amazing Race themed dating app, don't you think? <laughs> Yo, hey, I mean, for every pot, there's a lid, is what Diana always says to me. So I think that's for every a good idea, fan, though. Like, swipe left if you would do this detour, swipe right if you would do this detour, and then you match with people that are swiped for either detour. See, look at uh -oh. that. I like it, Bradley. You're on to something. I think CBS needs to hear about this. <laughs> I think you should get on that right now and make it. Just create it. And I'll endorse it. Me and Diana will get on it. Let's go. And we can incorporate roadblocks and U-turns into the app as well. And I've always wanted to see the yield return to the race. So let's throw that in there as well. Ooh, just slowing people down a little bit. Right. Just slow down. If someone's taking it too fast, you can put the yield on them. That's right. It's like giving somebody <laughs> the hand. It's like slow down. And if someone's taking Not it too ready yet. Right. If someone's taking it too slowly, let's throw in a fast forward. Yes. <laughs> See, look at this. There you go. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> so as super fans who have seen every single team take the journey around the world and have studied their gameplay, 
If you were to select your group of all stars that you'd want to race against, what teams would be included in that season? See, and this is surprising oh, because a lot of people, if you ask them who they would want to go against, I'm not sure that it would be against the same roster as Justin and I would pick, but it's definitely something we talked about. Justin, you can go through some of the people that we've talked about. Um, obviously, we want to go against Dave and Rachel because they have the record, and we think that they would be head-to-head one of some of the toughest opponents. So Dave and Rachel, Jim and Misty, because I like their grittiness, and I think that we would bring the best out of each other. Kim and Allie, I think they're two of the bad chicks to ever run the race and i would love to run the race against them i mean if you want to go old school i think bj and tyler were incredible i think they deserve a spot in the roster i mean you can even go to like nick and star if you want tk and rachel it's hard to pick i mean it's tough that i'm running through all the winners but i want to go against the best of the best dave and rachel have some of the best average megan and shane of course some of the best averages of any races ever tammy and victor bj and tyler bates and anthony i think that's kind of where i want to go bring on the top 11 teams to ever run the race and let's just have a best of the best see i think you on the first ever all-star season 11 would be perfect oh well that would have been fun because eric and danielle i mean eric is strong and danielle was all right but i think that he kind of pulled her along and diana is a lot stronger than danielle and i think me and eric would be very good head to head so i think having diana would be the edge and i think we could have beat them It's a much different game from season 11 than it is to now, and I'm sure the Guidos kind of told you how much the game has evolved since season one. So I don't know that earlier racers would be able to race what we do, and I don't know if we could go back and do what they did. Right, absolutely. And Diana, you talking about the evolution of the race leads me into my next segment, actually. Now, as you may have already figured out, I'm a very curious person. Very curious. But sometimes there are a few questions that I'm extra curious about because I've never been able to find the answers to these questions. So it's time once again for Clark's Curiosities. Clark's Curiosities. And I think we can use a little background music for this segment. So because Justin and Diana, your first destination that you traveled to on Amazing Race 27 was Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the background music for this edition of Clark's Curiosities will be Rio by Duran Duran. And my first curiosity is... On earlier seasons of The Amazing Race, the gap at the pit stop between the end of one leg and the beginning of the next was typically 12 hours. But from a viewer's standpoint, based on when teams check in and then leave on the next leg, to me it seems like the pit stop duration time is less than 12 hours. Is this true? Do racers now have less than 12 hours at each pit stop, maybe because of the 21-day time schedule the race is under now? Or do the teams still have 12 hours at each pit stop? So there were some legs that we had 12 hours. I think there was only one leg. We might have had like 36 hours, but that might have been due to weather. um, I mean, yeah, weather or like things outside of, I mean, our understanding, like whether it was production or things that they needed the extra time to catch up. But I mean, for the most part, it was like 12 to 16. I mean, you really had time after each leg to eat something, shower, wash your clothes, and you're going to bed and waking up and doing it all over the next day. So there's not really much buffer time for anything other than those three things. But now you can't even mingle with the teams. Years ago, you used to be able to. Yeah, there's no mingling. I mean, you do see them when you eat, but for the most part, there's no talking unless the cameras are on. There's no scheming between things. And the airport really is kind of the only downtime where you can really just talk and, I guess, relax. And speaking of the teams being together in the airport, that actually leads me into my next curiosity. Nowadays, they film the show in 21 days. To me, it's a bit rushed. Do you find that the show is too jam-packed? Because years ago, there used to be a lot of separation between the teams, and now it seems like all the teams are arriving at the same time, or there's not that much time difference between each team from each task or to the pit stop. Do you find it a little too rushed now? I think it's a double-edged sword. Like, you got to be careful what you wish for. Obviously, for us, I wish it was the old style because we were fortunate enough that we would have been days ahead of other teams at certain points in the race. So it was great back in the day because it gave the great teams a chance to really get ahead. But it sucked because you kind of knew that who was in the back of the pack was going to go home and who was going to win kind of before the race ended. So you knew who was going to win that leg and who was going to lose that leg. It was just how it was going to play out. And I think that's kind of what the producers were trying to stop. 
But they have to find the happy medium, and that's the hardest part, finding the medium point, letting the good teams get ahead, but keeping it competitive, you know, get a couple teams up there with them and letting the weaker teams fall back, but making sure that there's somebody back there with them. I think that's kind of what they're trying to do. I also think that there can be some adjustment as far as the million dollar prize. Justin and I were kind of throwing together some ideas after we watched MTV's challenge where, okay, there's a big pot, there's a million dollars, but maybe along the way you can collect money and overall a million dollars was given away. So, I mean, that way it kind of rewards teams like us that did well and stayed in the front that maybe we would have collected a lot more than the second place prize in three trips and maybe give more teams a chance to collect money along the way as opposed to just one big prize because in that aspect I understand that that's the nature of the beast where it doesn't matter how many times you win first place you have to win that last one and for us it was like we came so far to just have it vanish right in front of your eyes is devastating and it's great for Kelsey and Joey it's great for those teams that you know what they just survived they just made it and they won first place in the end and that's all that matters but for us you just want more but just to piggyback on that like if there was fifty thousand dollars for the winners of the first six legs and then a hundred thousand dollars for the winners of the next five legs and then two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the winner of the final leg this way it's a chance for people who win one leg like you know denise and james Earl, and they get one trip and they wind up actually instead of winning something spending three thousand dollars to go on a discounted trip that you're going to spend three thousand dollars to go on so it kind of stinks for those teams so maybe that's one way that they could switch it up and work within that 21 day time frame it also gives more teams the chance to change their lives I mean, we were fortunate enough that we won seven. I mean, our season probably would have hated us because we would have racked up most of the prizes. But it also gives other teams a chance, like Tanner and Josh, like the first leg. Maybe that first leg was worth $50,000. I mean, that's huge. That's life-changing for them. And it's just fun to think of different ways to make the race more exciting or just to give it a little different flair to keep things new and different than what they are. Oh, believe me, I've thought of plenty of things to add to the race. (laughs) Actually, I'll tell you a funny story, which will show you how many years I've actually been a super fan of The Amazing Race. When I was in elementary school, every day I would walk to school, and along the way I would be in my own little world and actually play The Amazing Race. I would be all the teams, I would be Phil, and I would plan out the whole race course from the number of legs to the destinations and challenges and add in fast forwards and yields. But the best part was creating my own original twists and elements and adding them in. And over the years and quote-unquote seasons that I did, I had quite a few of these new elements that I scattered in. So that was when I actually started thinking like an Amazing Race producer and saying to myself, what would I do if I had a chance to create an actual season of The Amazing Race? That's That's awesome. That's so cute. And when I met Phil at his Laride screening in New York City, I actually had the chance to tell him that story. So it was a very special moment for me. Oh, that's great. Well, there's ways to make the Amazing Race happen on a smaller scale, even if it's in a city and you get people to sign up and everybody puts $100 in a pot and then you design the clues and winner takes all or something. I mean, there's ways that you could do it on a smaller scale if you have that drive to make it happen. Absolutely. And here at Hofstra, actually, I've pitched an idea to create an Amazing Race-inspired show for the school's television department. Unfortunately, the green light hasn't turned on yet, but I'm still pushing for it. So maybe this year it'll happen because I have many of the elements, including a bunch of original ones, already planned out. Oh, that's great. Well, let us know if we can help. Absolutely. With enough time, we can make the trip up and make a special appearance. That would be awesome. I really appreciate that. And I'll certainly keep you updated. Okay. So my next curiosity is, would you happen to know why teams end a leg at one location and start the next leg at a different location now? Because originally the pit stop location will be the exact spot where the next leg started. Sometimes it's like a matter of 100 yards as opposed to like really different locations. It's usually someplace close to where the hotel or the place that you're going to be sleeping is. And depending on where it ends, is it safe or not? But yeah, it's usually really close, if not the same exact spot. So I don't think it's really changed that much. Speaking of pit stops, my next curiosity, I want to go back to season 27. When you were waiting out on the 11th leg, 55 Mm. minutes, Mm. what did you do to keep yourself calm or sane? It was, well, it was one of those things where, at that point, there's nothing you can do. But we had just kind of gotten close to Tiffany and Krista, and it was one of those things where, okay, we really like them, and you were almost rooting for them to not succeed in order to move on. And it was just, there's nothing that we can do. We have to wait it out and just hope that time's on our side in this case. Luckily, time was on your side. Minutes, literally minutes. I cannot believe that we survived that. It was so tough to deal with. I thought our race was over, but I'm glad that we got a chance to make it to the finals. It's that, however, 
You don't ever want to hear Phil say, however. Ugh. Now, as fans, now I know this. Usually he'll say, you're team number two, you're team number one. But when he says, you're the second team to arrive, or you're the first team to arrive, you know there's always going to be a however. Oh, don't, yeah. It's like, Phil, don't do this to me. Stop it right now. And this is a situation where you can tell who on the race are true super fans because if a team on the mat is cheering after Phil says something along the lines of, you're the fourth team to arrive instead of your team number four, then you know they have no idea what is about to hit them in terms of a penalty. Those are the things that the super fans know. When the wordage is different than in past seasons, you're like, okay, I'm waiting for that but, that however, I'm sorry to tell you. There's just no way to kind of calm your nerves when the script doesn't play out like it's supposed to. The weird thing was is when we had gotten to the ferry station, we were asking all of the workers there, like, did you see people like us? Did you see camera crews? And they kept saying no, no. And we're thinking, no way that we're in first. But, I mean, you would recognize people like us. I mean, you would recognize the camera crew so because we were in first so much like okay well it's possible that we just blasted through everything else and it's great or there's something wrong this time this is not like the last time you know why do i feel so uneasy and well why did nobody see camera crews then so you just don't know what it is going to play out today and my final curiosity is after the race officially ends and the filming stops what happens we have final interviews, which happens after every pit stop. You get bussed back to the hotel. We got our phones probably that same night. Just kind of like, all right, that's it. It's a wrap. It's still like separated. And Although everybody did go out that night. And since we had checked our bags to go straight through, we didn't have a change of clothing. So we were still both soaking wet from jumping in the ocean <laughs> after the lobster crate. I mean, Justin and I, we were in no position to want to mingle or socialize with anybody because we were just devastated. But it's just kind of like, all right, that's it. Tomorrow you yeah, leave. I'm Tomorrow you're on a flight home. You'll see your family. Sometimes you got to wait a while. We had to wait a little bit for paparazzi to get there as well. Right, right. I actually thought of one final curiosity. You were, of course, labeled the green team. Was that put on you by production? Since a lot of the times now, each team will wear a specific color throughout the race, or at least at the starting line. Was that put on you, or was that your idea to be the green team? Well, we had asked for it. So kind of like, I guess, still in the casting process, they had said, you know, you're going to be getting bandanas in the mail. Use it as a guide if you want to, to make yourself stand out. So we had just requested to have green since in Iceland, we had the Northern Lights. They were green. Green just kind of became our thing. So we said, can we have green? We were lucky enough to get a green bandana in the mail. So that kind of solidified the green thing for us, which we tried to shop and buy things green. That kind of just became our identity. But we gave them some suggestions for team names. We had Aurora Love. Justin was living in Phoenix. I was in Philadelphia. So we had like Philly to Phoenix. I mean, we gave them some suggestions, but I think the green team came from the other teams. Is that right, Justin? Yeah. So, you know, we took the first flight out and we were the only team on that flight. So we didn't get to bond with any of the other teams. And then we instantly got ahead of everybody. That's so right. it took us a while before we got to hang out with any of the other teams. So whenever they were interviewing about us, they didn't know our names. They always referred to us as the green team. So I think because everybody, when they were talking about us, they just kept calling us the green team, that that just became our name because that's how people knew us. As soon as we won that bike race, those 10 teams got against us and they didn't care to know us or who we were. We were just the green team who was going to get voted out at the first chance that they can. So that was kind of, I think, where it came from, that the other teams just called us the green team. And it stuck. Yep, it stuck. We're the green team. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Clark's Curiosities. Clark's Curiosities. So let's chat some more about season 30. We mentioned before about our disliking of the Washington Square Park starting line editing, but I'm sure you were thrilled that Iceland was the first destination on this season of The Amazing Race. Absolutely. I mean, just to know that like that was a place that's so special for us, to know that that's where their journey starting was really exciting. It just kind of felt like another little connection that Justin and I had to season 30 and just to the amazing race, to our love, to our proposal. Just a nice little connection for us. I loved it. I'm, I was hoping that they would go to Iceland during our season. I think that would have been perfect, but we can't wait to go back. We went in the winter. It was like you know, 20 hours of darkness and four hours of light. So we want to go in the summertime when it's 20 hours of light and, and check out the rest of the country. And I'm sure since you're fans, you would know the answer to the question, but do you know the last time 
that they went to Iceland because they've only been twice now. What was the season last six? Season six is correct. See, look at that. You know yeah. stuff. <laughs> hey, I know my Iceland stuff. <laughs> you know your Iceland. <laughs> So besides this season featuring a brand new country the Amazing Race has never traveled to before, Bahrain, we're going to have new elements this season. I guess they want to spice it up for season 30. They're introducing the face-off, which has been in other variations of the race, most notably yeah. that I know of, Amazing Race Canada. They featured it the last couple seasons, the face-off. Yes, and- super excited. I think that is literally the best task of all of them. Better than detours, better than roadblocks, better than anything. I think the face-off is the best thing they could have brought into the race, and I'm really, really looking forward to watching it play out. I also think it's a feature of the race that, as far as design purpose, it really allows for separation of teams. I mean, there were times when you would come in first and you'd get a 15-minute head start, whereas like this, I mean, it's really going to jumble people up and give people leads or move people from the first to the last. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I agree. I think it's one of the better of the new elements that any form of the race has featured. I'll be interested to see what the penalty is on the American version and if they're going to use it more than just once. I hope they use it more than just once. You know how they say, this is the first of only two fast forwards. I hope they'll say, this is the first of two face-offs found along the race. Right. That would be great. Yeah, I'd love that. It causes more drama. It forces teams to face off. I think it's great for television and it's great for racers to kind of go head to head because a lot of times it's you against the race course. You're not really racing against the other teams because if you beat the tasks, you're just going to the finish line and this is literally going against the other team. So I think that's kind of something that made me and Diana race so much harder, like in Africa, when the boys are sitting there in a canoe behind us, and it's these two big six foot three muscle bound dudes in a canoe, and it's me and Diana. And we're just smoking them because we got the inspiration. They're right behind us. We have technique. They have muscle. And we're destroying them. Those are the times that I think we excelled and we didn't get enough chances to have those. So I would love to have a face off on our season. Now, what are your thoughts on the other new twist appearing this season, swapping partners? Now, this scares me. I don't know how this is going to play out. You can only swap but for so long. I feel like it's going to be along the same lines of the intersection. I can't see them swapping partners for a whole leg. I feel like that's not really serving the purpose of that element. If you really focus on one or two challenges and then say, at this point, you have to wait for your other partner to arrive at that same location, and then you can continue racing. I think that'll build tension. I know the fans online have always kind of commented on swapping, swap partners, swap partners. So now that we have it, everyone's trying to kind of put their brains together. Okay, well, what's this going to look like? I mean, people have been asking for it. Let's see. How's it going to play out? What's it going to look like? And also, too, I don't think they can do it in terms of a full leg. Because just imagine that one half finishes and then the other half is eliminated. You can't do that. I would hate to see that they swap partners and then those are their partners for the rest of the race. I feel like that's an injustice. Well, there's no way because how would you win and how would you decide? I mean, it just probably leaves more problems later on. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I like the fact that they're trying new stuff. And I like the fact that the ratings have been through the roof. And if things keep up like this, that there'll be a season 31. That's all I want. I want 31, 32. I want them to resign and just kind of let them go out when they want to go out, not when CBS pushes them out. Well, I hope so, because I'm going to be 21 this year, so I can finally apply. Well, I would love to see your audition video, and if you run it by me, I'll give you some pointers. I'd love to see you on the race. It'd be very interesting. (laughs) Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And actually, when I had the Guidos on, I thought of a really good Amazing Race season theme, and the Guidos liked the idea I came up with, so I thought I'd run it by you now to see if you like it as well. So you'd have 11 teams of three, and the teams consist of an all-star team plus a super fan running the Amazing Race with them. That'd be great. That would be great. It'd be very interesting. It's not quite the family edition. Uh, right. With four people. But I think, yeah, if they did that and knocked it down to like maybe 10 teams instead of 11, just because you have to learn so many different people, that's 33 people that you're going to have to try to fit into a one hour episode. Right. Well, actually, that's why they did, I believe, that's why they did 10 teams for the family edition. There was going to be an 11th team, but for some reason, they cut them out. Well, yeah, getting to know 40 people, that was just... I mean, I'm a super fan, and I still don't know half of the people that were on that season. Right. (laughs) I thought it was a great idea. I liked it only because it's kind of one of those things where, like, when Jess and I have a family, it would be a great thing to just be able to kind of go on your own amazing race around the country and just expose your kids to it. But I know it does not get a lot of likes from the Amazing Race fan base. 
Yeah, and that's why I would love to see my idea happen where you have all-star teams partner with a superfan because it gives a unique twist on the team structure like the Family Edition tried to do. But hopefully the fans will enjoy my idea more than a lot of them enjoy the Family Edition. Yeah, and it's like, how can the all-star team help the super fan, and what can the super fan bring to the all-star team, like putting all three of your heads together? I like it. I think it's a good concept. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun. I'd be interested to watch the season like that. If we were going to pick a third person, it would definitely be a super fan over some like celebrity or athlete or something like that. I'd want the super fan, because that person's going to know to just shut up and listen to me. <laughs> no, no Justin, gonna know. no, 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 no. All of the little things that it takes to win the race. <laughs> well, I'm excited to say that we've come to my favorite time of the game show. We're going to play an actual game. It's time for the game of the day. Game of the day. And I played this with the Guidos, and now it's your time to play... The Fast Pace Race. The Fast Pace Race. Ooh, the Fast Pace Race. So here's how we play the Fast Pace Race. Just like in Season 27, there are 12 legs, and for each <laughs> leg, I'm going to give you the choice of two destinations to travel to. Each one corresponds with a multiple-choice trivia question, and all the questions pertain to a moment from a past Amazing Race season or leg featuring that location. Okay. Now, I know you two are super fans, so this should be right up your alley. Let's get it. So we're going to go through every leg, and your goal is to make it from leg one to leg 12 without getting three incorrect answers, which symbolize three non-elimination legs. Okay. Okay. Also throughout the race, there you know we like to add some twists in there. One of the locations features a fast forward, which means if you pick that location, we will go right to the next leg. Nice. However, there's also a U-turn on the race. No. Which means if you pick the U-turn, you will backtrack to the previous leg to answer the unanswered question before continuing on to the next leg. Okay. And that's all the rules. Are you ready to play? Ready. Let's do it. Then let's play the fast-paced race. (laughs) And because Season 30 started in New York and Season 27, your season, ended in New York, Today's Game of the Day background music will be the Frank Sinatra classic, New York, New York. But before we actually depart, I have to channel my inner Phil Kogan as I say, Justin and Diana, the world is waiting for you. (laughs) Good luck. Travel safe. Go. And we're off. (laughs) (laughs) Now, the Guidos, they got five out of 13 questions correct. They had 13 legs because that's how many legs were on their seasons. So they had five out of 13. So if you get six right and they said you're going to crush it, you will beat the Guidos. Let's get it on. Here comes your first two destination choices. They are Russia or Australia. Ooh. Diana, you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'd say Australia. All right, let's go Australia. All right, let's go Australia. Here comes your leg one Australia question. During leg 11 of season four, teams had to travel from Seoul, South Korea to what Australian city? A, Sydney, B, Melbourne, C, Perth, or D, Brisbane? Dan, this is a pretty easy one. I don't know if you want to take this. No, Justin, this is not easy. If not. (laughs) You're the one that introduced me to it, so why don't you take this first question? Australia, they went in the final leg. I think it would be Brisbane if they're going to go to the final leg. It would be Brisbane, final answer. Well, I am happy to say that Brisbane is the correct answer. Now, we're getting it on. I knew you had this one. You have one correct answer. You are off to a fantastic start. <laughs> and here comes... I think you started. <laughs> here comes your leg two destination choice. China or Mongolia? Oof. Well, I Let's think... pick China. Yes. Just because we went to China. All righty. Leg two, China. Here comes your question. During leg five of season 18 in Xilin, China, a roadblock challenged one team member to assemble a life-size model of what kind of dinosaur? A. Dilophosaurus B. Brontosaurus C. Triceratops or D. Velociraptor I'm going to go with Dilophosaurus You locking in that answer? Yes Once again, you are correct. Dilophosaurus is right. You are doing fantastically well. Here comes your leg three destination choices. 
India or Thailand? Uh, uh, we're picking that's India. Definitely India. That's it's an one. easy one to pick. Yeah. I loved India. All right, you have two. You are on leg three. Still no incorrect answers, which is great to see. And here comes your question. Leg three, India. Which of these Amazing Race seasons did not feature the famous head-shaving fast-forward challenge? Which did not feature oh, not. the okay. head-shaving fast-forward challenge? Was it A, 5, B, 7, C, 13, or D, 20? I know 7 was Eugenia and Joyce, for sure. So that means 5, then. Okay. Are you locking in five. A, 5? Well, it's which ones did not. So I know 7 did. So which ones yeah, did not? Yeah, they wouldn't know? do it two seasons that close. I'm not 100% sure, so I would guess 5. Okay. Are you locking in 5? Yes. Your first two legs were flawless. Unfortunately, though, leg three had a speed bump for you two. Five is the wrong answer. Dang it! It was C, 13. Season five was the first time they ever did it. If you remember, Brandon and Nicole did not go for it because Nicole didn't want to shave her head. Brad fact! That's why I don't remember because she said no! We even talked about it, like when I shaved my head. Would you do it? Dang it. Um... She said it depends how far along yeah, the race you Yeah, it kind of, yeah. Like, it would depend on the situation. Like, I cried when Joy shaved her head. And just her telling herself, like, it's just hair. It's nothing that is important to me. People lose their hair all the time. It was just really inspirational. I think if I was in that moment and I kind of had that, we have to do this, then I think I would definitely do it. It's just hair. When Uchenna and Joyce ended up winning the race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good call. Brought them good luck. And season 20 was the year that Bopper and Mark took on the challenge. Well, yeah, it was pretty easy. <laughs> or really, it was just Bopper because Mark already had a, yeah. a bald head. <laughs> yes. Oh, dang it. I can't get them all right. All right. But that's else? okay. You have, you have one incorrect answer, but that doesn't mean ah. you're going to get any more wrong. We'll see. Leg four. Bangladesh or United Arab Emirates? Let's go to Bangladesh. Here comes your question. Leg four. During leg nine of season 17 in Dhaka, Bangladesh, which of these race elements was featured for the first time? A, blind U-turn, B, double U-turn, C, blind double U-turn, or D, U-turn place before a detour? Oh my gosh. I would go the blind double. That's not just a guess though. Let's go blind double. I trust you, baby. I don't know this one. Lock it in. Too bad. Lock Lock it in. You said blind double U-turn. You were half right. It was actually double U-turn. Ah, dang it. We had a good start. (laughs) It's all right. We're going to pick up speed here. Come on, baby. We got this. You have two incorrect, but that's okay. You just have to get all the next ones right. (laughs) We can win out. That's right. Exactly. Leg five. Romania or Estonia? Oh, let's go to Romania. Romania. Okay. Here comes your question. On leg th- 14. Very oh, good. Is- Unfortunately, that's is it? not. Unfortunately, that's not the question. Which season do they go to Romania? But <laughs> 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 but very good that you knew that the only time they went was season 14. Do you remember what leg? It has to be in the middle. I would guess five. No, it's three. <laughs> oh. All right. On leg three of season 14 in Romania, the pit stop was overlooking a castle linked to what fictional oh, character? Come on. A, Cinderella, B, Frankenstein, C, Sleeping Beauty, or D, Dracula? Diana. Dracula. (laughs) Are you locking in Dracula? Final answer. Oh, yes. Dracula is the right answer. (laughs) That's one of my bucket list places to go. Romania? Romania and Dracula's castle. I had like a weird, brief obsession with Vlad the Impaler and reading up (laughs) on him. I think he's a pretty cool guy. I don't know who's scarier, Vlad the Impaler or the Phil Eliminator. Yeah, true. <laughs> Phil's only dangerous on the race course. <laughs> <laughs> you have made it to leg six. This is the halfway point. All right, let's get this fast forward. Let's go. Leg six. <laughs> Hungary or Austria? Well, I found out I'm Austrian, oh, so yeah. I would like to go to Austria. Austria, okay. Here we go. Leg six to Austria. A detour option during leg three of season four required teams to visit the house of composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in Vienna. Which of these famous pieces did Mozart write in his Austrian home that the teams visited? A. Don Giovanni B. The Marriage of Figaro C. The Magic Flute or D. Symphony Number 40 It's gotta be Figaro, Figaro! Are you locking that in? 
I trust you, Justin. <laughs> Go Figaro. I remember Figaro. Maybe it's from Bugs Bunny, but it might be from The Amazing Race. Figaro. Well, it could have been from The Amazing Race because the marriage of Figaro is the right answer. Yeah. Boom! We're back on the right track, baby. You have now finished half of the fast-paced race. All right. Halfway through, baby. We're not getting eliminated. Leg seven, the Netherlands or England? Oh. Let's go with the Netherlands. I loved the Netherlands. The Netherlands. All right. Here comes your leg seven question. During leg nine of season 21, a switchback okay. roadblock challenge had one team member ditch vaulting in Amsterdam. I remember that. Which season featured the first ditch vaulting roadblock challenge? A, 4, B, 12, C, 15, or D, 19? Mm, I'm going to say 12? 12. 12 sounds right. Finally, it's 12. Mm, I hope you're right, Justin. Yeah, it's 12 and 21. They were backwards. Well, you don't have to hope anymore because 12 is the right answer. Yeah. Hi, Casey and Justin. Well, we can't lose to the freaking Guidos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you have actually tied the Guidos. You have five correct okay. answers. Come on, baby. Come on. So if you get this right, you can at least say that you beat the Guidos. Leg nice. eight. Norway or Sweden? Ooh. Where do you want to go, baby? Norway or Sweden? Let's go to Sweden. Going to Sweden. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is a tense moment. This is to beat Joe and Bill, Team Guido. <laughs> During leg three of season six in Stockholm, Sweden, teams traveled to the world's largest IKEA store to take on the detour. Remember that? For yes, because the... I love building things. <laughs> well, I'm actually going to ask you about the other detour option, not the build it one. <laughs> okay. Oh, dang it. <laughs> For the count it detour option, which of these items was one of the counting bins not full with? So which of these items was not in one of the counting bins? A, pots, B, pans, C, stuffed animals, or D, hammers? I have no idea. I want to say hammers. You really? Stuffed animals doesn't fit. No, but they're in Ikea. I was just, I just bought that thing in Ikea. They definitely have pots and pans. They don't have hammers. They have stuffed animals. How can you not have hammers in a place where I'm you gotta just, build stuff? Okay, well then what's your answer? I was going to say stuffed animals, because Ikea is not related to stuffed animals. I'm going hammers. Final answer. Uh, I'll take the blame. Justin, you always have to listen to your wife. Hammers is the right answer. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy about Go that. Right. I said I was just an Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I, they was. don't sell hammers. They do sell stuffed animals, pots, and friends. Well, you see, I learned from the race. I listened to my wife, and I let her take the answer, right? And I just proved that I can be right. <laughs> I know you can be right. You are one half of the greatest team that ever raced in the amazing race. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> <laughs> and you beat the Guidos. Boom! Even better! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Would you like to say anything to the Guidos? I just want to thank you guys for being great competitors, and I look forward to skiing when we visit you guys in Utah. And I'm going to say, eat my dust. Yes. <laughs> you have made it through eight legs. You have four legs to go. You have four correct answers in a row. Let's get another four to win the fast paced race, all right? All right. Here we go. Leg nine. Five You're... in a row, like on the real race. Uruguay or Paraguay? <laughs> Aren't they the same? <laughs> no. <laughs> one has a P, one does a... Up to you, Justin. Paraguay. Paraguay, okay. Here we go. This is your leg nine question. A detour option called Stacked Up during leg three of season 20 in Asuncion, Paraguay, required teams to stack what fruit into a 10 by 10 pyramid? Oh, you remember that? That's a watermelon, right? Oh, he's going to give multiple choice. A, tomatoes, B, watermelons, C, papayas, or D, cantaloupes? B, watermelons. Locking that in. Final answer. Locking it in. You didn't even need the choices. Watermelons I is right. I knew Boo! that one. Go, baby! And that's five in a row. So if you get this one right, you have beaten your own record on the real race. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Let's go. And by the way, you avoided the U-turn. Uruguay was the U-turn. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. All right. Leg 10. Brazil or Bolivia? Brazil. Let's go. That was on our leg. Season 27. What's the question? Here's your question about Brazil. 
the first clue of Season 9 instructed teams to fly to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and travel mm-hmm. to the rooftop of a hotel named what? Hotel Modern, Hotel Grand, Hotel Lavish, or Hotel Unique? I want to say A. I don't know why that sounds familiar. Unique stands out for some reason, but it could be modern. Okay. Well, you trusted me. I'll trust you. That's... I just took a guess. Unique. Fine. Unique. Final answer Unique. You're locking All Unique? Right, I... Oh, yeah, I trust you this time. <laughs> well, Justin, you trusted Diana when she was right. And now, Diana, you trusted Justin when he was right. Hotel Unique is correct. Really? And that means you have six correct in a row. You've beaten your amazing race record right here on the fast paced race. <laughs> Oh my Drop God. the mic. Drop yeah. the mic. Oh, we're going to pick it back up because we got to play. <laughs> you are so close to the end. Leg 11. Unfortunately, leg 10 in Bolivia, that was where the fast forward was. Oh, I was wondering about that. But you didn't need it because you got the answer yeah. right. Forget Ooh. that. Two more legs to go. Leg 11. Peru or Ecuador? Ooh, Peru. Let's go to Peru. Peru. Okay. Here's your question. On leg 10 of season 26... Oh, that's easy. Okay, Come on. Reset. The detour choices in Atusco, Peru, were mm-hmm. which of these opposite pairings? A, fire or ice? B, land or sea? C, walk or run? Or D, mamas or papas? Do you remember this one, baby? No, do you? Yes. Do you want to take a guess? Season 26, that's blind daters. No, I don't want to take a guess. I don't have a clue. Was it mamas and papas? Do you remember the cast? Uh, read them again? I'm sorry. Fire or ice, land or sea, oh. walk or run, or mamas or papas? Mamas and papas. Mamas and papas. You locking that in? Lock that in, baby. Lock it in. Mamas and papas. Well, you weren't exactly sure what the tasks were, but it didn't matter. You just needed to know the choices. That is the right answer. Oh, good. That's good, it. Good, mamas good. and papas. Which means that's seven correct oh in a row. This is the oh, final God. leg. If you get Let's this go. right, you will have won mm-hmm. the fast-paced race. Here we go. Leg 12. Oh, my gosh. The pressure. Arizona or Los Angeles? Oh, the finale. The finale is only in Arizona once. It's always in Los Angeles. So I think the easier answer is Arizona. Arizona. Okay. You've made it to the final leg. You've traveled around the world. Now let's close in with the victory. At the end of leg seven of season eight, the Amazing Race Family Edition, which family famously ran to the pit stop in their underwear... To which Phil Kogan said to them, you look ridiculous. <laughs> A, the Linz family. B, the Weaver family. C, the Paolo family. Or D, the Branson family. You got this, baby? No. Well, I'm trying to think back which were the final teams. I don't remember, to be honest. So it's going to be a guess. I want to say Weaver. The Weavers were the ones that were kind of ridiculous the whole race anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, Weaver. Final answer, locking it in. You've made it this far. You've come as far as you could. Bradley, don't leave me hanging. This is the 12th question. If you get this right, you win. Unfortunately, it's the Paolo family. Uh, They weren't even on my radar. And just like the real race, we don't win the final leg. (laughs) Of course, it had to be about the freaking family episode. Yeah. (laughs) Would you like to know what the other question was to see if you would have known it? Sure, if you want to go real quick, let's run it. This was the Los Angeles question. Season 4 was the first of many Amazing Race seasons to start in Los Angeles, California. At which location was the Season 4 starting line? A, the Griffith Observatory, B, Dodger Stadium, C, the Playboy Mansion, or D, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum? Season 4, baby? The start line. I think it's A, Griffith. I can't picture them starting at a stadium. They started at all of those places. It's just a matter of which season. Oh, then maybe it was the stadium. Lockheed Dodger Stadium. And with that answer, you would have won the fast pace race. <laughs> Damn. Dodger Stadium was the right answer. They did start at all those locations. The Playboy Mansion was season 12. Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum was 13. And the Griffith Observatory was 22. Brad fact. Okay. That was a little awesome. I know Griffith. some were later, some were earlier. Sometimes it jumbles up in your head. But you knew the answers, so give yourself credit we- for that. Yes. Put us on the scoreboard and let us know if anybody beats us. But unfortunately, I have to say this. Justin and Diana, you've made it all the way around the world and you've crossed the finish line. But just like on The Amazing Race, here on the Fast Pace Race, you did not win, but you're team number two. Congratulations. 
But despite not winning, I hope you had fun. And that was the game of the day, the Fast Pace Race. The Fast Pace Race. No, oh, you did a good job. Yeah, man. it was great. My dream in life is to be a game show host, so that's how I practice. Well, you have two dreams, game show host and Amazing Race. The good thing about it is you're actually doing something about both of them. You combine them both, and you're doing something about it. So at least you're pointed in the right direction. I wish you luck, brother. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it has been such a pleasure talking to you, Justin and Diana. I've had so much fun. Well, thanks, Bradley. You're awesome, dude. And I offer this to the Guidos as well. You are always welcome back on the game show whenever you'd like. And if you want, after season 30 is over, we can maybe do another episode and talk about the whole season. Sounds there good. Go. Sounds good, brother. And I'll have another game for you ready to go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love my games. So I always like to challenge my guests. There you go. You want to be a game show host, you got to play some games. That's right. All right, Justin and Diana, once again, it's been such a pleasure. As a super fan, thank you so much. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. I just spoke with another mega successful team from the mega successful reality competition show, The Amazing Race. This is a race like no other in history. This is The Amazing Race. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Game Show. My thanks once again to the green team, Justin and Diana Sheeman, for being my guests today. And as this episode comes to a close, if you're saying to yourself, hey... Is there a way I could listen to this episode again or listen to previous episodes of The Game Show? Well, I've got some great news for you. You can listen to this episode again and check out previous episodes of The Game Show by logging on to www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark. That's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets slash The Game Show. That's www.soundcloud.com slash Bradley underscore Clark. That's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y underscore C-L-A-R-K-E slash sets slash the game show. Well, I certainly hope you all enjoyed today's festivities and be sure to tune in next time for another episode of the talk show about game and competition shows, The Game Show. I'm Bradley Clark, the Bradster, and I've got to make sure I'm not getting you turned. Bye for now. This edition of The Game Show was created and produced by Bradley Clark and was recorded at the WRHU Studios. This is Austin Angelo speaking. The Game Show is a Bradley Clark production. Get your game on.